Hello again and welcome back to our course on PSE 2018. In this and the next several sections we are going to start to look in some detail at layers. I've mentioned layers several times during the course already, we've even used them a few times. Now's the time to find out a lot more about layers and to start to use them in much more powerful and flexible ways. Many of the things that we do in subsequent chapters will depend on the use of layers. So to fully develop your skills and knowledge in PSE, it's really good if you can get to grips with layers. Some people find them a little bit baffling, but I'm going to try to explain them as carefully as I can and there'll be plenty of examples as we go along. If you've used layers in a previous version of PSE, particularly a very recent version, you can probably skip the whole of this chapter really. In this section I'm going to begin by looking at the layers panel. Then we're going to look at layer visibility and opacity. I'm going to look at adding a text layer, at adding a fill or adjustment layer, and finally I'm going to explain the importance of PSD format in relation to layers. Let's start then by looking at the layers panel. You've seen that a few times already. And each layer in an image is a tile in that panel. This particular image currently has one tile. And when you open a JPEG image in the PSC editor, by default, the image is made into a layer, a background layer, and in this case, the background layer is completely full of photograph, if you like. Every single pixel in the image has got a bit of color. When I'm working with layers, what I generally do is to always save a copy of the background layer, particularly when I'm editing a photo. And that's what I'm going to do now. If I right click on the layer in the layers panel, I have an option duplicate layer. And I normally make a background copy. And I usually call it background copy as well. Click on OK. And I've now got two layers and those two layers are basically the same. Now the background layer, the one I started with, has a couple of very specific properties that we'll come back to later on. But now that I've got two layers, let me explain a little bit about how layers work. When you build up an image in layers, what you see is what can be seen looking down from the top, if you like, through the layers. Now in this case, the top layer, the one you see first, background copy, completely fills the visible area of the image. So although there's another layer background underneath it, or behind it if you like, you can't see that at all because it's completely obscured by the layer that's called background copy. When you're building up an image, not all layers will be made up of photos and lots of pixels. We can, for example, have adjustment layers. I might have a layer here that is actually an effect, something that maybe turns all or part of the image into black and white. Maybe something that improves the lighting, lightens the picture or darkens the picture. I can have other layers with shapes on them. I could draw a butterfly shape and make that a layer. I can have other layers with text on them and I'm going to demonstrate two or three of those options later on in this section. One of the most important things is to remember that if you plan ultimately to use full-blown Photoshop that also is based on the use of layers and the principles of using layers in Photoshop are basically the same as they are in Photoshop Elements. So if you learn how to do this in Photoshop Elements, you're quite a long way down the road of learning how to do it in Photoshop. Next we're going to look at layer visibility and opacity. If you look in the layers panel, to the left of each layers tile, you will see a little eye symbol and at the moment the eyes are not crossed. That means each of those two layers is visible, although of course you can't see the background layer because the background copy layer is in the way. If I make the background copy layer invisible by clicking on the eye, 
although it won't immediately be apparent, you're now looking at the background layer because the background copy layer is invisible. If I click on the background layer, then they're both invisible. And what you can see now is transparency. There's nothing there. Let me make the background copy layer visible again. Apart from making layers visible and invisible, you can make them more or less opaque. Most layers by default are 100% opaque, but you can reduce opacity. Let me make the background copy layer less opaque using the slider. Now as I make it less opaque, it becomes semi-transparent. Now you can just about make out the image, although of course you can see the transparency checkerboard behind as well. And apart from using a slider for opacity, you can directly type an opacity value in there as well. Let me set it back to the maximum. What I'm going to do now is to add some text to this image. So I'm going to go back to the Type tool, the Horizontal Type tool, select size, font, etc. When you add text to an image, you automatically get a new layer. And this is one of the, if you like, other types of layer. This is a text layer. Note the T in the little thumbnail there in the layer, indicating that it is a text layer, indicates text layer. Now, although a text layer is fundamentally very different from a standard layer with an image on it, it has many of the same properties. So, for instance, I could make it invisible by clicking on the visibility eye icon there. I can also change its opacity. So if I wanted to make it 50% opaque, it's as easy as that. Now notice that while I was working on that, you can see that the Roseberry topping layer, the text layer, is the one that's highlighted. And you select a layer to work on by clicking on it in the Layers panel. So if I click on the background copy layer, note that the opacity now says 100% because that is 100% opaque. Let's change that to 50% as well. And now both of the visible layers have 50% opacity. What I've done now is to restore both the background copy layer and the Roseberry topping text layer to 100% opacity. And I've changed the color of the text, the Roseberry topping text. And I'm going to insert another layer into my image. I'm going to select the background copy layer. When you do an insert, the inserted layer goes above the currently selected layer. So the new layer here will go above background copy. And what I'm going to do is to use one of the buttons at the top of the layers panel, that one, which is create new fill or adjustment layer. And the type of adjustment layer I'm going to create is a hue saturation layer. And what I'm going to do with this layer is to increase the hue like that. Quite an extreme change, quite a noticeable change. Now you notice that it has an impact on the picture itself, the photographic image, but it didn't affect the text Roseberry Topping. And the reason for that is this. When you look down at this image through the layers, the first thing you see is the Roseberry Topping layer. So you see the text without anything being done to adjust or change it in any way. You then come to the Hue Saturation layer, and through that you see the background copy layer. And the background copy layer is affected by the Hue Saturation layer. Now, let me just close that dialog. Let me take the Hue Saturation layer, click to select, and drag it to the top of the Layers panel. Now, that Hue Saturation Layers effect is seen through all of the visible layers in the image. So it affects the text and the image. And if I right click on the Hue Saturation Layer, click on Edit Adjustment, right at the bottom left there, 
there is a little button. This adjustment affects all layers below. With this set, the effect of the adjustment layer is all of the layers below it. Now it probably is more accurate to say that they are potentially affected because some types of layer wouldn't necessarily be visibly affected by hue saturation changes. If I click on that little button, I create what's called a clipping mask and that means that this particular hue saturation will only apply to the layer immediately below it. In our case that would be the text layer, so if I click that now the adjustment only affects the text layer. Let me hover over that button again. This adjustment clips to the layer. If I click it again it will affect all layers. Now let me drag it back down to where it was before just above the background copy. Now of course Rosebery topping text is not affected but the image immediately under the hue saturation layer is affected. A couple of other important points about adjustment layers. One of them is that you can make an adjustment layer invisible and then the effect of the adjustment just basically doesn't happen. So if I click on the visibility indicator for the adjustment layer, the adjustment no longer applies. One of the great advantages of using layers is that if you want to try something like an adjustment, you can try it. If you don't like it, you don't have to sort of erase it and maybe come back to it again later. You can just make it invisible and maybe you may want to change it, try it again later and so on. All the time it's invisible it won't have an effect on the image. Also when you look in the layers panel at the adjustment there are two thumbnails. The first one indicates that it is a hue saturation layer and the second one indicates a layer mask. Now I'm going to talk about layer masks in a couple of sections from now but basically a layer mask is what you use to make a layer only affect part of an image. So if I only wanted this hue saturation change to affect part of the image, I could create a layer mask. A completely white layer mask, like the one you can see here in the thumbnail, indicates that this particular adjustment is affecting the whole of an image, or at least the layer or layers below this layer in the image. Now the last point I'd like to make about this is one that I made much earlier on in the course and which probably now will have quite a lot more significance for you. And that is that if you want to save an image and preserve the layer structure, so for instance if I wanted to save this and say well I'm going to come back to this later and put some more layers in and move more layers around and so on, you need to save it in PSD format. I can save it in, for example, JPEG format or PNG format, but if you save in one of those other formats, you lose the layers. What you save is, in the case of JPEG or PNG, for example, an image that looks just like what you can see on the screen at the moment. But when you open it again, the layers will all be gone. It'll be a single layer. You'll be starting again with that as your background layer. So if you want to maintain layers, you need to save in PSD format. So I'm going to save this to the course files folder in PSD format. Note the options, I'm not going to include it in the elements organizer. I am going to save the layers, important option there. That's the end of this section. I'll see you in the next one. Hey everyone, Simon here, thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe to our channel and click over there to get a free three hour course for learning essentials of Photoshop Elements 2018. And click over there to get the complete list of videos in this playlist. I'll see you next week with additional videos.